morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed nationwide weather forecast for April 3rd, 2025. A lot to get through today. Low pressure has cleared out of Queensland and by the looks of things it's just a few residual showers and thunderstorms dotting the line across the northern part of the state. We've still got a few showers and thunderstorms as well in the Gulf of Carpentaria but let's start off with a forecast over in Queensland last night. Some good thunderstorms and showers and rain bands moved through the southeast of the state into the northeast of New South Wales delivering some healthy rainfall accumulations there. Up towards the triple figure numbers as well we had some pretty big rainfall accumulations there, just from stagnant rainfall uh, bands that were not uh, budging. Well, they were moving, but they were moving in a linear fashion, so we were seeing those shower bands consistent over quite a few of these locations, and as such, some pretty big time rainfall accumulations were reported. But you can see this morning, the rainfall has, for the most part, cleared out of southeastern Queensland. A few showers still hanging around here and there, and some uh, thunderstorms as well offshore. You can see a couple of uh, storm bands going for Mackay on the north coast, and you can also see a couple of good thunderstorms up in the Gulf of Carpentaria coastline as well. Showers and thunderstorms will linger in this area for the next couple of days. You can see the magnitude of the floodwaters out in the Diamantina and the Cooper Rivers out here. Just huge, and they are struggling out there in southwestern Queensland still. The floodwaters are not dropping just yet. They have slowed on their ascent, that's for sure. We aren't seeing many more major contributions to the rivers out here, but we're not expecting flood levels to begin dropping until at least later this week and into early this weekend. And it doesn't look like access is going to be restored to a lot of these communities until next weekend. So not this weekend coming, but the weekend after. We've still probably got about two weeks until we're going to get a proper idea of the damage to some of these towns and it could be up to a month until we get a proper idea of the stock losses over in southwestern Queensland. A truly heartbreaking stuff indeed and the fact that you can see the magnitude of this flooding event on the satellite imagery when you zoom out to encompass all of Australia, heck all of Southeast Asia in fact is truly mind-boggling. The water, though the expanse of water is the size of some European countries. It really does uh, beg a belief at this point here. We've got more water than surface area of uh, small Asian nations such as Taiwan or more water than uh, small European nations such as Switzerland or uh, some of those places over there. It really does beg a belief how big these floodwaters expanses are. But anyways, let's jump into the forecast right now. It is a forecast update. We're not going to be looking too far into the past, but you can see a few showers and thunderstorms still expected through this afternoon and evening. Some good rainfall also expected around Maxwellton and Huendon throughout the remainder of this afternoon as well. We could be seeing some heavier falls out there with a further 100 millimeters possible today and into tomorrow as well for some locations. However, it will be falling in the form of thunderstorms and showers, so rainfall will be sporadic, it will be widespread, but it's not going to be uh, a bang on bullseye for a lot of these locations. It's going to be more of a hit and miss type rainfall forecast. Uh, thunderstorms expected through tomorrow afternoon as well. The potential for some severe thunderstorms south of Charters Towers up around the uh, Moran, uh, Moranba, the Glendon and the Claremont sort of area. And a few good thunderstorms expected to head into the Mackay area and also into the southern areas of Mackay, so Serena, St. Lawrence, Ogmore, Yapoon and Rockhampton could get a good a couple of thunderstorms through tomorrow night and into early Saturday morning. To kick off the weekend, there will be a few showers along the North Queensland coastline. The winds will turn around back to the southeast, which means rainfall will be pretty consistent across the far North Queensland Cassowary Coast through this weekend and into early next week. And you can see a few showers hanging around through Sunday as well for North Queensland. Showers will be heavier at times through Monday and into early Tuesday morning for the Cassowary Coast. They will ease off temporarily through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. And a few showers expected here and there through Wednesday and into Thursday as well. Winds continuing from the southeast, which means those onshore flows will continue up in far North Queensland through Saturday and Sunday. And you can see showers and storms expected to be pretty widespread there. They're not going to be too heavy. And right throughout the remainder of the forecast period, you can just see residual showery stuff moving through for north and far north Queensland. The wet season is not over yet. We can still be expecting some respectable rainfall accumulations. So let's take a look at them right now. You can see over the next couple of days with rainfall and showers streaming in from the Gulf of Carpentaria attached to that low pressure system and now clearing out of Queensland. Rainfall accumulations will be widespread between 25 and 75 millimetres across north Queensland, especially into the Gulf Country. Burkton and Karamba could see a further 70 to 75 millimetres of rainfall over the next couple of days. Maxwellton and Huendon as well, good a uh, couple of thunderstorms moving through those areas, especially tonight into early tomorrow morning, and as such, another 50 to 75 millimetres can be expected for both areas. Heavier falls up to 125 millimetres are possible for locations such as Miranda, Claremont, Serena, St. Lawrence, and Rockhampton. Much needed rainfall down there. Rockhampton has picked up some healthy accumulations over the last couple of days with some more thunderstorms and showers on the cards there. We can't be riding off uh, further triple-figure rainfall accumulations, which could start to cause a few flooding concerns down there into some of the uh, rivers, which are now starting to pick up a little bit of moisture. Uh, pushing the forecast forward a little bit further, you can see once those winds swing around from the southeast, the rainfall is going to begin piping up for far north Queensland's Cassidy Coast, and you can see 14-day rainfall accumulations up there. Whilst they're nothing flashy, you can see 120 to 150 millimetres on this forecast. As I always say with far north Queensland, considering their nature and their elevation and all the factors that play in up there, you can often get away with doubling or even tripling the rainfall accumulations, which will get you numbers between 100 
150 and 400 millimeters over the next 14 days. And 400 millimeters, if it is spread over a 10 day period, it's not going to be problematic for far north Queensland. But just note that we could be seeing some days, especially next Tuesday morning, where we do have some heavier bands of rainfall moving through up into the Casbury Coast, which could cause some flash flooding or some minor riverine flooding for some locations. Certainly a good thing to keep in the back of your head at this point in time. For the remainder of Queensland, a few showers expected here and there for southeast Queensland. The majority of those are going to be coming through in the next couple of days. But uh, in terms of the shower and uh, thunderstorm situation down for the southeast corner of Queensland, nothing really to be talking about. And so much needed rain relief for those in southwestern Queensland and for the rivers that feed southwestern Queensland. You can see that there is no decent rainfall on the forecast at all for the next 14 days. It looks like the majority of this rainfall that's going to be falling in far north Queensland is either going to flow out into the George, uh, the, into the no, the Leichhardt River rather, I don't bad to call it the Georgetown River, uh, or the Burdekin or the Pioneer River over onto the North Queensland coastline. So good news up there, that is for sure. Now, I do still have a few concerns with the longer range forecast for the Coral Sea. Now, you can see the Eastman Bear forecast has dropped that low pressure system that we were talking about, but enhanced moisture can be expected through the second and the third week of April into the Gulf of Carpentaria. But this enhanced moisture is nothing in comparison to what the GFS is calling for here. You can see by the 13th of April, we're already starting to see low pressure systems begin developing up in the Coral Sea. And this was reciprocated with what we saw in yesterday's forecast update as well. But the GFS, if we push this forecast modeling even more forward, you can see it does develop into a tropical cyclone out here in the Coral Sea. And this is not uncalled, for, uh, not unheard of this time of the year. We do every now and then see tropical cyclone activity at this time of the year in the Coral Sea. But the interesting fact is that it pushes it down south into the Coral Sea past New Caledonia before it weakens off and expands into a large broad low pressure system, more remin reminiscent of an East Coast low as it approaches Lord Howe Island and Norfolk Island. Now, I would just like to say before I go any further into the details about this forecast, it's a general trend of this does bring it close to Southeast Queensland here. And that does look like a tropical cyclone is going for Southeast Queensland, like tropical cyclone Alfred, but you can probably hear it in my voice. I'm not for a second concerned about this. This is classic GFS. It's got a land bias, which means that it always causes these tropical cyclones or tropical weather systems to be going in for a landfall along any coastline, anywhere around the world. It's not just exclusive to Australia. And it's what we saw with the tropical cyclone Alfred forecast with the initial landfall prediction around the Rockhampton area. So there's nothing to be panicking about right now with the GFS forecast model. You do not have a cyclone going for you in Southeast Queensland. However, this is certainly an interesting aspect of the forecast that we might have an East Coast low slash tropical cyclone funneling a few showers and storms ashore into the third week of April across Southeastern Queensland and Northeastern New South Wales. That's why I'm bringing it up right now. It's been consistent over the last couple of days. Now the Eastern Reserve has dropped it from its forecast modeling. You can see much later on into the forecast period, but the Eastern Reserve has also dropped other tropical cyclones from its forecast modeling over in Western Australia. Some sure fire tropical cyclones that were looking quite likely to form. And I'll get to that in just a few moments. So I have reason to believe that the Eastern Reserve just might not be on a tropical cyclone biased run. So we're going to check back on this system in the next couple of days. And by this weekend, I should have some answers on what we can expect, generally speaking, into the southern extremities of the Coral Sea, whether we're going to see a tropical cyclone or an east coast low, which could result in a shower or rainfall event for southeastern or central Queensland or into the northeast of New South Wales. Still a lot of factors out there in the forecast models to play around with over the next couple of days. Uh, in short, conditions are looking pretty favourable for tropical cyclone condition, uh, development as well. You can see sea temperatures very warm still in the Coral Sea, up around 30, pushing 31 degrees in the, in the developmental stages uh, or zones. And you can see sea temperatures not dropping below 26 until you get south of the latitude of about Brisbane. So a tropical cyclone could still theoretically hold itself south of Brisbane. And it's certainly something worth keeping in the back of your head right now that we might have something cruel down the Queensland coastline, especially for, for those a little bit more northerly based, such as Mackay. They can get impacted by tropical cyclones at this time of the year. But I'm just making this as a point, uh, as a very early warning sort of uh, system as well. But for those of you that are also watching the Facebook pages as well, I guarantee you you're going to see some of this bollock stuff about tropical cyclones going into southeastern Queensland. So I strongly advise against taking uh, uh, forecasts from those pages there. And I also would advise you taking every forecast with a very heavy pinch of salt for southeastern Queensland's long-term forecast in terms of tropical cyclone or rainfall or something like that, at least for the next couple of days. And check back here because we'll have the latest information, the most accurate information for you when we get it. Anyways, pushing things over towards Western Australia, we're not going to touch on the Northern Territory today. You can see just a few more showers and thunderstorms expected up there it's in line with what we'd expect this time of the year with the wet season. But we are going to see a tropical low slash tropical cyclone develop sometime into mid-April offshore from the WA coastline as well. You can see the GFS has been very favorable of this over the last couple of days. We can see next week, especially late into next week, we are expecting a tropical cyclone to begin development south of Indonesia, halfway between Indonesia actually and the WA coastline. And we could be seeing a weak tropical low then become a strong tropical low slash tropical cyclone skirting 
diverting offshore from from the WA coastline, and then whatever it does from then on, it's still a little bit uncertain here, and a lot of decisions of the forecast modeling to be making. But again, I'll just pull back to the Eastern Wave forecast right now. You can see that that has completely cancelled the chance of a strong system. If you call back to yesterday's forecast update, where well, we had some great congruency between the forecast modeling, and now the Eastman Wave has just completely dropped it. So this could mean one of two things. The Eastman Wave is just not calling for tropical cyclone activity in this forecast run, and it'll switch back on next forecast run, or the forecast is now a whole lot more uncertain, and we're not 100% sure if we're going to be seeing tropical cyclone activity. Now, mark my words, if we do get a tropical low spinning itself up offshore from WA or the Northern Territory, it's going to have a field day. Conditions are extremely favorable for tropical cyclone activity offshore from Western Australia, and they remain that way as well. You can see sea temperatures along the coastline are pushing 32 degrees Celsius, and offshore between 29 and 30, pushing 31 degrees Celsius in pockets as well. So a tropical cyclone, if it does get itself going, will have an absolute birthday party out there. There's just no two ways about it. There's conditions are extremely favorable offshore from the West Australian coastline. Right now, it doesn't look like there's any threat or any realistic threat for the WA coastline at all. You can see the GFS forecast modeling has been calling for some hokey pokey stuff, calling for this to swing back into the WA coastline much later on into the forecast period. I'm not just sure where it's gone. It looks like the GFS forecast itself is just completely updated then. Oh yeah, you can see this forecast now taking it down in towards uh, the southern parts of WA. But again, I think this is something we're going to have to take with a very heavy pinch of salt over the next couple of days. But certainly an interesting aspect of the forecast and certainly one that I want people in northwestern Western Australia uh, to keep a close eye on, especially considering that the, if this does become a tropical cyclone, it will happen sometime in the next seven to eight days. And if it is going to be a threat to the, to the WA coastline, it will happen sometime in the next 10 to 12 days or so. So keep it in the back of your head right now, but there's no need to be making preparations for any of these locations. Uh, no place is expecting tropical cycling conditions in the next week or so, and if that does change, there will be very substantial amounts of warning. Again, it won't boil back to tropical cyclone Zelia, where we had very little warning, and then that eventually was not necessary, but we will have plenty of warning with this tropical cyclone if it does go for the West Australian coastline. Anyways, another interesting factor on the forecast that I would like to talk about, and it is playing into the gloomy weather that we're seeing across the southwest of the state right now in Western Australia, is we're going to have a low-pressure system develop along that West Coast trough, which is what's giving us those warmer than average days right now. But this low pressure system is expected to develop over the next couple of days. And yet it's already the reason why we're seeing quite a lot of cloud and some shower and storm activity streaming in from the Great Australian Bight. But this low pressure system here expected to develop through tonight and into tomorrow. And we could be seeing some widespread showers and the isolated storm or two here and there along the southwest corner of Western Australia, especially through parts of the Wheat Belt into the Northern Wheat Belt and even into the Gascoyne and the Pilbara regions as well. Now the showers and storms will be at their most significant or their most widespread through tomorrow and we could be seeing some widespread falls of up to 25 millimeters across parts of the wheat belt. Perth itself can expect a couple of millimeters of rainfall. For the most part, rainfall will be heavier towards the east of the hills. It's not going to be too heavy on that coastal strip encompassing Perth. And up to Lancelin and then down towards Bunbury, rainfall won't be too heavy. But a good couple of showers expected here and there and rainfall accumulations could be very healthy ahead of the cropping season of 2025. Showers hanging around through this weekend as well. It's going to be quite a gloomy weekend by the looks of things before they return on Monday with widespread showers and storms expected here and there across the southwest corner of WA and then a weak cold front is going to approach the coast on Tuesday and that's going to uh, swing the weather into a very cold period by the looks of things with a couple of colder days expected through the second week of April you can see out towards Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday the 8th to 10th of April respectively another cold front coming through on Friday and all around it just looks like it is going to be a much wetter and much more winter a winterier week for the southwest corner of WA rainfall accumulation still looking quite healthy on the forecast modeling as well like I said yesterday widespread falls up to 50 millimeters can be expected over the next 14 days with a lot of falls expected to be between that 10 to 50 millimeter mark throughout much of the wheat belt as well in fact the only places that aren't going to be picking it are the extreme northeastern corners of the wheat belt out towards Dalwall and Ewan Kalani uh, those locations typically quite a lot dry but still they've got the good chance of receiving that rainfall but for the most part this is a very healthy rainfall outlook here a lot of the wheat belt especially towards the south of Great Eastern Highway expecting between 20 and 60 millimeters of rainfall with some pockets expecting up to 100 millimeters of rainfall and considering that this is spread over a 14 day period of forecasting this is this is perhaps the best rainfall that we could see this time of the year for the southwest corner of western australia maybe a few more millimeters here and there but for the most part this is the best forecast that they're going to get ahead of cropping season 2025 and that is good news because it looks like the later months might be a little bit more difficult than the earlier months across the southwest of wa perth itself can expect up to 20 millimeters a lot of that will be coming through this weekend we're expecting a couple of drops of or a couple of decent drops of rainfall tomorrow and a few decent drops again expected on sunday and into monday as well so good news for Perth as well. Very good news for rainf uh, rainfall lovers as well. We do desperately need the rainfall. So again, all around this is looking like 
a very good forecast indeed. And generally speaking, across the southern states, unfortunately, no rainfall for South Australia and also very little rainfall for Victoria as well. It is starting to pipe up a little bit here and there, especially into some of the more mountainous regions towards the east of Melbourne, out towards Mount Dandurong. Uh, but the southwest of Tasmania is expecting some really significant rainfall over the next 14 days, which is great news indeed. Whilst not a lot of it's going to be coming through in the next seven days, you can see a few good drops expected here and there out towards mid next week uh, from steady cold fronts that are going to be moving through. But you can see 14 day rainfall accumulations now starting to look really healthy, especially across the southwest wilderness. Up to 150 millimetres can be expected. And Tasmania is normally the first place that we look at in these weather forecasts for winter rainfall. We did it last year and was able to predict the, the arrival of winter. And again, with the fact that these trees over in the southwest of Western Australia are now beginning to drop their leaves, and I imagine that that is also the case over in Victoria, South Australia, and parts of New South Wales as well. Certainly, winter is in the air, that's for sure. And I imagine Tasmanians will be the first to testify that statement. Winter certainly becoming a little bit more uh, felt across the southwest of uh, Tasmania, especially. A little bit of a cold front moving through those their locations right now, which could provide a few showers at the west coast, but nothing crazy there. And then that's going to be backed up by a high pressure ridge in the Great Australian Bight, which is currently providing some pretty stable conditions there. But this high pressure belt is going to leave pretty soon, and it's going to be cold front after cold front after cold front uh, very shortly for the southwest of uh, Tasmania and then very shortly after that it'll be cold front after cold front after cold front for WA, South Australia and Victoria that's for sure. Anyways that is all that I have time for in today's weather forecast thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for tuning in again as usual. A special shout out of course to the channel sponsors, their names are on screen right now and again I could not run the show without them and their support is much appreciated, they're the reason this program is able to run every single day so if you've got a uh, spare five dollars a month then click the join button it would be much appreciated as well and you get your name mentioned at this part of the video every single forecast update so again thank you so much to all of the channel sponsors their names uh, their names on screen right now and their support is much appreciated thank you so much to all of the recent subscribers as well and all the likes on the video as well i'm really appreciative of all of the feedback too but that is all for me today and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye